In this lesson, we'll introduce the method of maximum likelihood estimation and show how to apply this method to estimate an unknown deterministic parameter for random data. Well, similar to our setup for least squares estimation, we envision a parameter that we call alpha, taking a value or set of values for a vector parameter in some parameter space and an observation x that takes a value or set of values for a vector measurement in some measurement or observation space. Then we assume we have a statistical model that relates the observation to the parameter in terms of a probability density function for a continuous valued observation or a probability mass function for a discrete valued observation. In either case, we assume for now that the unknown parameter takes continuous values. And as with least squares estimation, our goal is to derive an estimator function, g, that processes the observation x to provide an estimate of the unknown parameter. For maximum likelihood estimation, though, we search for the parameter that makes the probability density largest for a continuous valued observation, or the probability mass function largest for a discrete valued observation. In either situation, we are in essence trying to find the parameter that creates a statistical model for which the observation we make is the most likely to have occurred. Now, whereas we typically view the probability density or mass functions as functions of the observation that are parameterized by some parameters, we view the likelihood as a function of the parameters that is parameterized by the observations. That is, for every possible value for the parameter vector, the probability density or mass functions are functions of the observation vector. Regarding the likelihood, though, for every possible value of the observation vector, the likelihood is a function of the unknown parameter vector. Now, the maximum likelihood estimate for the parameter vector, then, is the value that maximizes the likelihood for the particular observation subject to any constraints that might apply to the parameter vector. Now, because the likelihood can only take non-negative values, the parameter vector that maximizes the likelihood will also maximize the log of the likelihood. And because the log of the likelihood is often an easier function to optimize, we will explicitly define the log of the likelihood with its own symbol, which here we show with the lowercase l. So regardless of whether we choose to maximize the likelihood, or the log likelihood, we'll get the same estimate for the parameter, and this is called the maximum likelihood estimate. As an example, let's consider a situation where the elements of the observation vector are independent, identically distributed random variables, each with a normal or Gaussian distribution with an unknown mean mu and a known standard deviation sigma. The goal then is to estimate the unknown mean mu. Now, based on this statistical model, the likelihood is the product of the individual densities, the densities for each element of the observation vector, evaluated for each of the observed values. The log likelihood is the logarithm of the likelihood, and that converts the product to a sum and can be simplified, as we've shown here. Now, it turns out that optimization of either the likelihood or the log likelihood will result in the same value for the unknown parameter mu, but this is a function that's much, much easier to analytically optimize. So if we differentiate the log likelihood, for instance, with respect to the unknown parameter mu, we'll get an expression that we can set to zero to solve for the maximum likelihood estimator, which turns out to simply be the sample mean for the data. As another example, Suppose that the observed data are scaled versions of a sequence of independent, identically distributed Gaussian random variables that each have zero mean and a known standard deviation sigma, but each of our measurements is some unknown parameter A times these random variables. The estimation problem then is to determine an estimate of the unknown scale parameter A. Now because a scaled Gaussian random variable is still a Gaussian random variable whose standard deviation is scaled by the absolute value for the scale factor. The observed random variables are Gaussian with zero mean and standard deviations that are equal to the absolute value for A times the original standard deviation sigma, which is known. 
Now, because of this, we'll not be able to estimate the sign for the unknown scale factor. That is, we can't tell the difference between minus 2 or 2. And for the rest of this example, we'll assume that the parameter is non-negative. The log likelihood, then, is the product of these Gaussian densities, each with a standard deviation equal to a times sigma, where we've now assumed that a is non-negative parameter. And the log likelihood, again, converts this product to a sum. And if we differentiate this log likelihood with respect to the unknown parameter, and then set that equal to 0, we'll come up with a solution for the maximum likelihood estimator for the unknown parameter a in terms of the measured data x. So we take each element of x, scale it by its standard deviation, square it, take the average, and then take a square root. Now note that the square root could correspond to either a positive or negative value, but because we've assumed that the scale parameter is non-negative, we will select the positive value. Well, in summary, for maximum likelihood estimation, we begin by identifying the likelihood from the statistical model that relates the observed data to the unknown parameter, and then we solve an optimization problem where, for many situations, we take advantage of the fact that the maximizer for the likelihood is also the maximizer for the log likelihood.